standards so in this video let us discuss about buffers and buffer action so firstly let us discuss about the uh, definition of the buffers so what is meant by buffer here i have written that a solution which resists change in ph by adding acids and salts to it to it is nothing but to the solution uh, these are known as buffers for example if you see in this case of this diagram it consists of nh4 plus and nh3 solution right if you take this as a solution and here the p normally if you take normal solution then the ph is not stable so if when you add base and acid to that that's nothing but when you add salts and acids here salts acts as oh minus and if you add to that solution and if you add h3o minus strong acid to that solution then the ph gets stable so before the ph is not stable by adding these acids and salts then the ph will get stable to the solution so this mainly happens because of the buffers so the stability of this ph mainly takes place because of the buffers so it maintains stable ph in a solution so the stability takes place by this adding of buffers to the solution and if you take a live example if you take in the case of human beings in us in our case and not only in the, not only in the human beings but also in the case of living organisms each and every living organisms uh, there, there is a blood and that blood consists of bicarbonates and due to the presence of that bicarbonates then the pH of the blood uh, is maintained with 7.4 normally our pH of the blood is 7.4 and if this pH gets increased or get decreased then the human being or else other living organisms cannot get survived so the stability of this pH will get maintained with the help of bicarbonates so normally bicarbonates are the salts which are mainly present in the blood so due to the presence of the bicarbonates the, the pH the, the stability of the maintenance of the pH takes place so that's the one of the live example uh, in the case of blood coming to the types there are three types of buffers acidic buffers basic buffers and universal buffers acidic buffers uh, are nothing but which consists of weak acid and conjugate base so when you add to a solution uh, when you add this type of uh, pair to a solution then the solution gets stable and that buffers which you add to that solution are known as acidic buffers coming to the basic buffers uh, weak base plus conjugate acid when you add this pair to a solution then it gets uh, stable so that buffers which you add to the solution are known as basic buffers so coming to the universal buffers Britton Robinson buffer it is one of the most important example uh, which will be asked in your entrance examinations so I will explain you these three types of uh, buffers later and this buffer action can be explained by taking examples of this weak acid and conjugate base by each and every buffer so i'll explain you this mechanism later so before entering into the, that mechanism firstly you have to know the equilibrium expressions equilibrium expression is formed when the ph gets stable to a solution so normally when you add the strong base and strong acid to a solution then it gets stable right so before the stability is not maintained but by adding these both strong base and strong acid or as weak base plus uh, you know this type of buffers then it gets stable so when that gets stable then it mainly forms a certain expressions and that certain expressions can be expressed as monoprotic acid and polyprotic acids so coming to this polypro mon monoprotic acids we can explain this as it mainly forms products as singularly for example if you see this is the acid when it gets dissociated then when it gets dissociated it mainly forms only one hydrogen ion and one anion that's nothing but it mainly forms equal amount of products and in the name itself it indicates monoprotic acid that's nothing but it forms only one or as equal amount of products so coming to this polyprotic acid when it gets dissociated then uh, then it can lose more amount of protons for example if you see here more amount of protons has been lost and this in this way the constant dissociation of the first proton may be denoted as k1 that's nothing but pka1 normally pka is nothing but constant dissociation constant dissociation remember that one uh, pka is nothing but constant dissociation what is meant by this constant dissociation this plays a major role and it is a negative algorithm in such a way that when this pka concentration or a pka value gets increased uh, then we can say that the acid is very strong and when this pka value gets increased then we can say that acid is very weak so keep it in mind so what so what is the important thing which you have to remember so if the pk value gets increased then we can say it has a weak base sorry weak acid and when this pk value gets increased then you can say it has a strong acid so as i said you know i have said you here uh, the pk the pk extension but here if you see h3a will forms equal no, an unequal amount of products right unequal amount of products has been formed so there's nothing but the constant dissociation of the first proton uh, is you know is 
less than when compared to the its successive pk value. Here 3.13 is the value which has been got in the first expression but in the second expression pk2 value has been got increased to 4.76. In this way uh, the differentiation takes place between this polyprotic acid. So now let us discuss about these mechanisms of acid buffers and basic buffers and universal buffers. So coming to the buffer action, the first one let us discuss about the first one acidic buffers. So this acidic buffers, the pH of this acidic buffers is less than 7 which is very much important to note. P the pH of the acidic buffers is less than 7 and before only I have said you that this acidic buffers consists of composition of weak acid and conjugate base. So the best example for this weak acid which I took here is acetic acid and conjugate base best example is CH3COOMA, sodium acetate. And you have to remember one point that for this weak acid, uh, there's nothing but not only in this case of acidic buffers but also in the case of basic buffers, this weak acid will be added with base and this conjugate base will be added with acid. Keep remembering this point. It will be used later. And next, CH3COH. First, let us discuss about this reaction. CH3COOH, acetic acid, will get dissociated and mainly form CH3CO minus plus H plus. And I have said you that base will be added to this weak acid. So, which type of base I have took here? NaOH, sodium hydroxide is the base which I have took here. And when this sodium hydroxide gets dissociated, it mainly forms OH minus plus Na plus. And normally I have written here left to right and right to left. You can also write uh, normally the product formation of the products you can also write normally but for better convenience I have written like this to for making you understand properly. And here the H plus and OH minus which has been formed from this acetic acid and sodium hydroxide will get together combined and mainly forms a byproduct known as water molecule which gets released out. Okay. So this is the reaction which is mainly caused by this weak acid. So coming to this conjugate base which, have, which we have took sodium acetate is the best example which we took in this conjugate base right. So when this sodium acetate will get dissociated dissociation process and then it mainly forms Na plus plus CH3CO minus. So what I have said you we, we, we should add acid to this conjugate base right. So here the acid which I took is HCl hydrochloric acid and when this hydrochloric acid will get dissociation uh, then it mainly forms H plus plus Cl minus. So the CH3CO minus which has been formed in the CH3CO Na and the H plus which has been formed from HCl will combine together to form CH3COOH. Right? CH3COOH is nothing but acetic acid, right? So that's nothing but weak acid which has been arranged from here. So these both are similar, right? So due to that similarity, what happens? There is a formation of stability when it is added to the solution. So this stability is mainly caused by buffers known as acidic buffers. So this is about the mechanism of the acidic buffers. And this is, a, this is the only example which I have took. We can also take another example such as H2CO3 and NHCO3. H2CO3 is nothing but carbonic acid, NHCO3 is nothing but sodium bicarbonate. So now let us discuss about basic buffers. So now let us discuss about basic buffers. And this basic buffers I have said to the composition will be weak base plus conjugate acid uh, which together mainly forms a basic buffer. So the best example for this weak base is NH4OH. Uh, there's nothing but ammonium hydroxide and conjugate acid example is NH4 here. Uh, there's nothing but ammonium chloride and for this weak base acid will be added and for the conjugate acid base will be added. Before I have said you that for base acid will be added and for acid basic will be added. So in such a way that it mainly forms a stability and uh, to, to exhibit the pro property of powers. So firstly let us see the reaction which occurs by this weak base by adding acid. So NH4OH, ammonium hydroxide undergoes dissociation and mainly forms NH4 plus OH minus and we have said you that acid will be added to this base. So acid which I have took here is HCl, hydrochloric acid and when it undergoes dissociation it mainly forms H plus plus Cl minus and the OH minus which has been formed from NH4OH and H plus which has been formed from HCl uh, will get combined with each other and mainly left as a byproduct as H2O, water molecule. And next. NH4Cl, this one let us take about this conjugate acid NH4Cl undergoes dissociation and forms Cl minus plus NH4 plus. That's nothing but NH4 plus plus Cl minus. You can write uh, however you want, but for better convenience, I have written NH4 plus right here. And coming to this base which you have which, which we added uh, is NH4OH, sorry, NaOH, and when it undergoes dissociation, it forms Na plus plus OH minus. And this NH4 plus which has been formed from NH4Cl and OH minus which has been formed from NaOH will get combined with each other and mainly forms NH4OH. 
right? And this NH4OH which has been formed is similar to the NH4OH which undergoes reaction uh, of weak base. So due to that similarity, what happens? There is a stability which will be formed when these buffers will get added to a solution. So in this way, uh, the mechanism takes place in the basic buffers when you add to a solution. And next examples, some more examples. Uh, for these basic buffers are NH3 which acts as weak base and NH4 Cl which acts as conjugate base sorry conjugate acid NH3 is nothing but ammonia NH4 Cl is nothing but uh, ammonium chloride and NH3 ammonia another, another example NH3 is ammonia which acts as weak base and NH4 CO3 ammonium carbonate which acts as conjugate acid so these are about the basic buffers and now let us discuss about universal buffers and coming to the universal buffers and Britton Robinson buffer is one of the best examples which we took before itself and it is shortly abbreviated as BRB and the pH of this Britton Robinson buffer is 2 to 12 and it is named as Britton Robinson buffer because it was discovered by two scientists uh, Robert Anthony Kevin Britton and Robert Anthony Robinson and they discovered this uh, universal buffer that's nothing but Britton Robinson buffer in 1931 and this universal buffer, normally this universal buffer consists of mixture of acids and this mixture when it is added with alkali, alkali is nothing but base uh, you know like salts, when it is added with salts undergoes titration in such a way that stability of the pH gets maintained and for example, examples of these acids, for example mixture of acids I have said you right mixture of acids is nothing but two acids which we took here are H3PO3 and H3PO4 so these are the two acids which we took and this acids which we took which we have took uh, should be in equimolar quantity there's nothing but i have written here 0 0.04 moles right and here also 0 0.04 molar should be taken but it should not be taken as 0 0.05 uh, it should not be different it should be same hence it is said as equimolar quantity right the quantity of the uh, acid which we took should be equal okay i have so i have written 0 0.04 here and 0 0.04 also here so here nao naoh Sodium hydroxide is an alkali which should be added to the mixture of acids I have said you before right so here NaOH is added to the mixture of this acid and 0.2 moles of NaOH is added in such a way that it undergoes titration so titration takes place with the help of a compound called CH3COH acetic acid 0.04 moles so all of this should be taken with equimolar quantity only okay so in this way uh, when all of this undergoes equimolar quantity and uh, you know undergoes titration then the stability of the pH takes place when it is added to the solution when it is added to the solution so coming to the another one two salt buffers I, I didn't explain you about two salt buffers and it and of course it is not very much important two, two salt buffers are nothing but salt, uh, phosphate buffers and the best example for this phosphate buffers are KH2PO4 and K2HPO4 okay and KH2PO4 is nothing but mono potassium phosphate and K2HPO4 is nothing but uh, dipotassium phosphate so this is about the buffers and their buffer action so thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video please do like and subscribe and in this two salt buffer uh, we took examples of kh2po4 monopotassium phosphate and dipotassium phosphate right and in this monopotassium uh, sorry yeah in, a, in this monopotassium phosphate and h2po4 will act as weak acid in this monopotassium phosphate with and in this case uh, dipotassium phosphate hpo4 2 minus will act as conjugate base so uh, there is no there is no need of this remembrance and you have to remember only this weak acid and conjugate base so H2PO4 acts as weak acid and HPO4 2 minus will act as conjugate base and I have said you that uh, uh, to the acid base will be added and for the base acid will be added right and here in this case weak acid hydroxyl ions will be added hydroxyl ions is nothing but OH minus OH minus is nothing but it indicates base right uh, for example, if you add Na to that NaOH, sodium hydroxide, KOH, potassium hydroxide, in that way, basis, or in simple way, you can say like salts. When this OH minus hydroxyl ions will get added to this weak acid H2PO4 minus, then it mainly forms HPO4 2 minus plus H2O. And coming to the next conjugate base, I have said you that for the base, acid will be added, and acid can be expressed as H3O plus right hydronium ions and when this hydronium ions will be added to HPO4 2 minus then it mainly forms H2PO4 minus plus H2O by this you can understand the similarity with this both and H2PO, H2PO4 is similar with this H2PO4 and H2, HPO4 2 minus is similar with this HPO4 2 minus so due to the similarity of this both uh, these two salt buffers when it is added to the solution uh, it mainly forms the stability on the pH 
it merely forms the stability of the pH. So in this way, this is a mechanism of the two salt buffers. So now let us see the importance of these buffers. And coming to the importance of the buffers, one of the one of the most important uh, important uh, thing of these buffers is maintenance of the blood pH. So normally, what is the pH of the blood in the living organism? So 1.4 is the normal pH of the blood, right? And this. Uh, helps in the maintenance of the blood. Normally, ups and downs takes place in the pH. There's nothing but increase in the pH or decrease in the pH takes place within the blood, and that uh, that that you know proportions will be controlled by these buffers, so that it, we can say that it helps in the maintenance of the pH blood. So that is nothing but uh, the pH of the blood maintains up to 7.4 only, and it cannot be decreased and cannot be increased because of the presence of the buffers which will be added, and this. It can be maintained by two buffer systems. They are primary buffers and secondary buffers. And normally, these primary buffers are present in plasma, and it contains of carbonic acid and bicarbonates. Carbonic acid and bicarbonates. And coming to the secondary buffers, these are normally present in erythrocytes, and it contains oxyhemoglobin and hemoglobin, and it also consists of acids and uh, alkaline, you know, potassium salts, uh, which acts uh, and also consists of phosphoric acid. Normally, it consists of acids and salts, right? And acid acts as phosphoric acid, and here. Alkaline is nothing but base, which I have said to you before, which acts as potassium salt, and uh, this acts as secondary buffers. So coming to the next one, one of the next important is uh, pharmaceutical system. Normally, this in this pharmaceutical system, these are normally widely used in the field of pharmacy, and normally it is used in the field of pharmacy and in the pharmaceutical formulations in order to adjust the pH of the product for the maximum stability. So normally we know that stability takes place when the so when the buffers are added to the solution. So this pharmaceutical systems mainly helps to prevent uh, more stability. That is nothing but maximum stability. So coming to the parental preparations, and it is one of the most important important thing which you have to remember in the importance of these buffers. Parental parental preparations. That is nothing but the pH should be considered carefully in the large deviations. Uh, if it undergoes large deviations, then it mainly causes to it it causes to death. Before only I have said you. When it undergoes large deviation, that's nothing but when the pH gets increased, then it mainly leads to death. So that uh, control controlling the process takes place with parental preparations. And best example is acetate and phosphate. It should be injected into the organism with the help of injections. Coming to the next one, ophthalmic preparations. Ophthalmic preparations in these buffers are generally uh, in these buffers are generally used in the ophthalmic preparations to maintain the pH. To maintain the pH uh, with the physiological pH range of lacrimal fluid. And the best example for this ophthalmic preparations are borates, carbonates, and phosphates. And next, coming to the next one, ointments, ointments and creams. And these buffers are also used in the ointments and creams in such a way that uh, it helps in the maintenance of the stability and formulation. So most commonly used buffers in these ointments and creams are citrate and phosphate. And this parental preparation we can also include citrate over here also. So these are about the one of the most some of the most important. Uh, you know properties of the buffers so thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video please do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box i will clarify your doubts immediately thank you